of course, of course, always recording. Okay, so today is the, the pin ultimate class, all right? Which is just a cool word for second to last, apparently. All right, so we're going to continue talking about um, sort of this mean value theorem, and we're going to look at how integrals behave for even and odd functions. Okay, so uh, this is posted in the usual spot under 5.4, but it was, it was just posted a couple minutes ago. All right, so recall that the average, oh wait, y'all can't see, I didn't share my screen. Whoopsie daisy. I don't have a Twitch, I, I regret to say. My computer would not be able to handle streaming. Okay, so recall that the average value of a continuous function f of x on the interval that, I mean, I guess that's true, but I'm not streaming like a video game. It's just a blank page. <laughs> um, recall that the average value of a continuous function f of x on the interval a to b is uh, computed as the integral from f over of f over from a to b divided by the width of the interval, right? So now I want you all to find the average value of this function here on the given interval. Calc 2 is pretty lit, I think. I never took it. All right, so I want you all to compute the average value of this function on that interval. All right. <laughs> We're all engineers. What do you need Calc 3 for? Could be. Um, to be a hundred percent honest with you, Calc two is generally, I think, considered like the harder, the hardest of the Calc courses. And then Calc 3 is basically like just doing Calc 1 again with more variables, which isn't really that difficult. Uh, yeah, I took three quantum mechanics classes. Back in the day. Okay, so let's let's work this out. 
So to find the average value, you integrate this function from 0 to 3, and then you divide by the width of the interval. So the average value is 1 divided by 3 minus 0, integrating from 0 to 3 the function x squared plus x plus 1 dx. Okay, so we'll use the evaluation theorem to evaluate this integral. So we need to find um, an antiderivative. So what's an antiderivative for x squared? Mm -hmm. And for x? Mm -hmm. And for 1? Perfecto. Okay, so the evaluation theorem or the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us to then plug these uh, endpoints in. So we plug in 3 into our antiderivative and then plug in 0 and take the difference. If I plug in 0, it'll just be 0 since all of these terms have a factor of x. So I'll just worry about the 3. So 3 cubed is 27. Uh, 3 squared is 9. Uh, 27 over 3 is 9, and if I want to put everything over 2, it would become 18 over 2. I'll leave 9 over 2, and if I want to put 3 over 2, it becomes 6 over 2. So let's see, 18 plus 9 is 27, 27 plus 6 is 33. So I get 33 over 3 is 11, and then you're just left with 11 over 2, barring some arithmetical mistake. Can affirm. Thank you. 33 over 6, 11 over 2, same thing. Five point five. <clears throat> tomato, tomato, indeed. That's right. Okay, so um, <laughs> indeed, one way of sort of evaluating like certain integrals that might otherwise be difficult difficult is to look at whether the function is even or odd. And then if you're integrating over a symmetric interval, the answer kind of just like falls out for you. All right, so let's remind ourselves what, what does it mean for a function to be even or odd. So a function is even if f of negative x equals what? What? Good. If f of negative x equals f of x, then the function is said to be even. All right. What about an, uh, a function is odd if f of negative x equals what? Perfect. Negative f of x. All right, what is an example of an odd function? Mm -hmm. Okay, yep, x cubed. Pretty good examples, x. Indeed, any x raised to any odd power would work. So sine 
um, tangents also odd sign and like a polynomial where everything's raised to an odd power are, are the kind of like quintessential examples. Okay, what about for even functions? Good, cosine. X squared, perfect. Uh, a constant is also an even function, something like five. So if you add something like X to the fourth plus five would be even as well. Okay, so for example, something like x to the, so let's say I'll write another one, say like x squared minus four. So what does that look like? Oh yeah, you're right. Let me, actually I want x squared plus four. Okay, so it means it's it means that if I flip it over, if I flip the graph over the y-axis, I end up with the same graph. Okay, so it has this symmetry um, over the y-axis. You're right. Thank you. Negative x squared plus four. OK, an odd function, something like x cubed, we say has a symmetry about the origin. All right, so let's see. So. What happens if I integrate an odd function over a symmetric interval? So, so keeping in mind this x cubed example here. If I integrate it from 0 to a, So if I integrate from 0 to a and I get m for an odd function, what would be the integral from negative a to a? What would that evaluate to? 0. Perfect. Okay, for an even function, if the integral from zero to a evaluates to some to some um, value m, what would the integral from negative a to a evaluate to? Mm -hmm. Good, just two m. Okay, so I'm going to break y'all into groups and I want y'all to do uh, number five. So first test like whether the function is even or odd and then use sort of the above result to evaluate the integral.
Okay. So is the first function, the absolute value of x plus three, is that an even or odd function? So, okay, so let's, how do you whether a function is even or odd? You can just plug in negative x and see what you get. So if I plug in negative x, I take the absolute value of negative x plus 3. So what is the absolute value of negative x. <laughs> Indeed, it's just x. Or it's the same thing, at least, as the absolute value of x. Well done, Greg. 10 points to Greg. All right, so this is the same thing as f of x. All right, so this is an even function. Okay, that means that if I want to integrate from negative 5 to 5, sometimes it's easier to just integrate from, from 0 to 5 and then double it, basically. Zero is an easy thing to plug into most functions, right? And it, it helps kind of with the antiderivative a little bit. So if I integrate from zero to five, okay. So you should always remember the absolute value function is a piecewise function. It's piecewise linear. It's just two lines, at least like the bait. I mean, they all are, but this one in particular. All right. So if I'm only integrating from 0 to 5, then on that interval, the absolute value of x is equivalent to just the function x. Like to the right of the y-axis, the absolute value function is just a straight line uh, at a 45 degree angle. So it's just it's just the same thing as y equals x. So I can replace the absolute value with just x. Now I can take an antiderivative, right? So an antiderivative for x, as you've said, is x squared over 2. 
what's an antiderivative for 3x? Oh, sorry, what's an antiderivative for 3? Jump the gun. Okay. And the limits of integration are now 0 and 5. It, it, it can be helpful to do this because I don't really need to worry about the 5 part. I mean, I don't need to worry about the 0 part because if I plug 0 in, every term here has a factor of x, right? So I really just plug 5 in. And I get... 5 squared over 2 plus 3 times 5. So that's 25 over 2 plus 15. Okay, but that's just half of it, right? That's only the integral from 0 to 5. The integral from negative 5 to 5 will just be twice that value because our function is even and using this like 4b result basically. So this will just be 2 times 25 over 2 plus 15 which is 25 plus 30 or 55. Um, because uh, the answer we initially got was only the integral from 0 to 5. Okay, so we're basically using the result from question 4, which says that if the integral from 0 to a of f is equal to m, and f is an even function, then the integral from negative a to a is 2m. So the 25 over 2 plus 15 comes from integrating from 0 to 5. Then if I integrate from negative 5 to 5, I just double that value since it's an even function. Mm -hmm. All right. For part B, again, we'll just test whether this function is even or odd. So f of x is sine cubed x cosine squared x. And you just plug in negative x and, and follow your heart. See what happens. OK. Um, so kind of ignore, ignore the exponents here now. Like those are sort of the outermost operation. Really, I'm evaluating sine of negative x, and then I'm cubing that thing. Or I'm evaluating cosine of negative x, and then I'm squaring that term. All right. So what is sine of negative x? Good, negative sine of x, because sine is odd. All right. So this is like negative sine of x cubed. OK, what is cosine of negative x? Good, just cosine, because cosine is even. OK, when I cube a negative, it just remains negative. So this is still just like negative sine cubed x. And then cosine of x squared is the thing as writing cosine squared x. It's the same. It's just different notation for the same thing. OK, so I plugged in negative x, and I basically just picked up a negative coefficient in front of the whole term. So this is the same thing as negative f of x, all right? So f of x is odd. Mm 
Mm -hmm. That's right. All right. So if I integrate from negative pi to pi, what will my answer be? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Zero. Which is nice because I would don't really have any hope of coming up with uh, at least from what we've done thus far in this class, we don't really have any hope of coming up with an antiderivative for sine cubed to cosine squared. All right, but we don't need one. We're sort of exploiting the fact that the function is odd. Okay, so remember to exploit odd functions. Indeed. Okay, the mean value theorem for integral says that if f is a continuous function on the interval from a to b, then there's a c in a to b where f of c is equal to the average value of f. Okay, so that's basically saying that there's a c where f of c is equal to the average value of f on that interval. All right, to see sort of, to so seven, let's see. Blip, 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 blip. Seven we already did, actually. That was the last problem we did on Monday. Um, so I'm actually going to have you all do uh, another average value problem. And then we'll, we'll draw a picture and kind of see, like, why this makes sense. So I want you all to find, the first thing I want you to do is find the average value. All right, find the average value of the function negative x squared plus 9 on the closed interval from 0 to 3.
Okay, so to find the average value, um, we just integrate this function and then divide by three. What? Load. All right. Okay, so an antiderivative for negative x squared will be negative x cubed over 3. An antiderivative for 9 is 9x. All right, so if I plug 3 into this, Let's see, negative 3 cubed uh, is negative 27 divided by 3 is negative 9 and then plus 27. Yeah, that looks like it, right? So I get 1 third, 27 minus 9 is 18, or 6. Okay, so graphically, let's kind of see what's going on here. All right, so I was integrating. I was integrating the function negative x squared plus 9 from 0 to 3. So that's an upside down parabola that crosses the x-axis at 3. And my average value was 6. Okay, the mean value theorem, if I if I rewrite it, so basically if I take this like b minus m in the denominator here and multiply it over to the other side, another way of sort of expressing this is that 3 minus 0 times f of c equals the integral from 0 to 3 negative x squared plus 9 dx. f of c, I, maybe I don't know what c is, but f of c is the average value, so that's 6. All right, so basically for yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the area under the curve from 0 to 3 and the area of that rectangle are equal. Right? They have the same area. So that's basically what it's saying. So for any continuous function on a closed interval, there's some point that sort of like lies in between where um, the area under the curve will be equal to the area under a rectangle of that of that height, and the width is the same as the interval that you're integrating on. Okay, and this point sort of has to like lie in between the the max point, like the highest point of the function, and the lowest point of the function on that same interval. Okay, so let's look at question A, or question 8. So for each situation below, find the average value of the function on the interval 
and verify that at least one C value, uh, as in the MVT above, exists. So we're going to like find out where the average value occurs, basically. All right. So to find the average value of the function, you just integrate it and divide by the width, like over the given interval and divide by the width of that interval. So the average value All right, so what's an antiderivative for 1 over x? If I'm just on like the positive x-axis, good. So really an antiderivative for 1 over x is the natural log of the absolute value of x. But since I'm only integrating from 1 to e, I'm on like the positive side, I can just take ln of x. Okay, so ln of e minus ln of 1 evaluates to what? Good, just 1. Because ln of e is 1, and ln of 1 is 0. So the average value is just 1 divided by e minus 1. So there's some value c. in the open interval from 1 to e, where f of c equals 1 over e minus 1. And we can, we can find that. So we'll basically just take our function and set it equal to this average value. So if 1 over x equals 1 over e minus 1, then what is x? Okay, and e minus 1 does fall in this interval, like e is around 2.7, so if I subtract 1 from it, I get around 1.7, which is between 1 and e. Okay, so that's all. Um, the next problem is basically the same, but we're out of time. So. Thank you all for stopping by. This was our last, I guess, kind of lecture on Friday. We'll review for the module. Uh, I couldn't really say. Some Definitely some people have struggled with it. Oh, thank you all for, for, for being here. It's my, my privilege. Onward, comrades. Glory. I don't know yet what I'm teaching. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can definitely take after you take in Calc one. You can definitely take physics, and it would help you with your like Calc skills. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I think summer classes are great. It will be all online. So I have to consider that if um, if that's a deal breaker for you or not. Uh, mostly Tabes, but myself Tabes and Matt, Matthew Lee, fix the, fix the problems. Yeah. Yep, yep. That's right. That's right, Milo. No. No where your butt is bred. Wait, no, that's wrong. No where your bread is buttered. <laughs> <laughs>